This is a lesson on how to use the eye peeled scaffold in order to answer one of the questions you were given on futurism. It's really important, I feel, that you understand how to use the eye peeled scaffold in preparation for your exams. So let's get started. We need to know how to eye peel and lots of you have asked for further information and further exploration. So what I've put together is this screen capture, screen recording, and I hope that you'll be able to listen to it and apply it to what you need to do from here on into the end of the year as a learning um, support for you at home at your own pace. So let's get started with how to eye peel, a basic writing scaffold in visual arts. The first thing you always have to have a look at is what is the question asking you to do? And you can see here on this screen that the question is written up the very top. And what I've done is I've used the same format that I, ta I taught to you at the beginning of the year, which is to first circle the instruction word, what have you been instructed to do? And in this case, it's you've been asked to describe. You need to underline the topic words. So what have you been asked to describe? You've been asked to describe how world events, that's the topic, it's world events. And we also need to work out within this question, what are the limiting words? So if we've been instructed to describe and we've been asked to describe how world events do something, we need to find out what those description of the world events actually apply to. And in this case, we've been asked to apply it to the futurists. So they're the limiting um, area that we have to apply our understanding or our description of world events. It has to be within the context of the futurists. So the question is asking us, describe how world events shaped futurist art ideals. And you'll see here, I've circled the instruction word, I've underlined the topic words, world events, and I've boxed the limiting words, which in this case is futurists. You'll notice that um, there's also a infographic that I've put together which you can use over and over and over again as you get used to this scaffold. So once you've identified what the question is asking you to do, you then need to get into actually answering the question. And you start off with an introduction. And you'll notice down here on the left hand corner at the bottom, I equals introduction. What you need to do in your introduction is to answer the question briefly and clearly outline the points you will elaborate on in your paragraphs. At this stage, if the question allows for it, you also introduce the artist and all the artworks that you're going to be referring to in the body of your essay. Then we've got the peel prop aspect of um, I peel. And peel is P for point, E for elaboration, E for examples, and L for link back to the question. So in paragraph one, you need to have a point. You need to elaborate on that point. You need to provide an example and then you need to link back to the question. So let's actually have a look at how you would answer the above question, how you would actually introduce it and then how you would actually structure a paragraph to answer that question. So introduction, as I already said, wants you to answer the question briefly and clearly outline the points you elaborate on in your paragraphs. Introduce the artist and or the artworks. Please do not simply rewrite the question in another way. That's pointless. You've got to take this opportunity to actually answer the question. What do I mean by that? Okay, have a look at this screen. You'll notice up on the very top it says introduction and in red, answer the question. So let's look at how I've answered the question. Number one within this introduction, I've broken it down so you can actually specifically see what I'm doing. So in number one, I'm addressing the question directly, remembering that the question asks me to describe the world events that um, were uh, influencing the futurist art ideals. So world events are perhaps the most important factors in identifying what shaped futurist ideals. So I'm answering the question directly. I'm not rewording it, I'm actually providing information. I'm saying that the world events are probably what are most important in terms of how the futurists arrived where they did, in terms of what they believed in. 
Number two in this introduction, I'm giving a brief overview of what was happening in terms of world events. So I'm still specifically addressing the question, but I'm just actually giving more information. So let's start at the beginning of the introduction. World events are perhaps the most important factors in identifying what shaped futurist ideals. Europe was in a state of political turmoil and the world was changing quickly as a direct result of technological advances and scientific explorations. Now I'm going to give you um, a brief introduction to what inspired the futurists. So what I'm essentially doing in this introduction is I'm dealing with all the aspects that that question is asking of us. So I'm actually going to let you know who the Futurists were. The Futurists were a group of young men who were inspired by the promises of a brave new modern world. And it is in this climate of vast modernization and change that the Futurists, led by Marinetti, clarified their values and beliefs in their Futurist manifesto. So what I've set up here for my reader, and remember that an essay or a short response is always directed at the reader. You are educating that person. So in this introduction I've done the best I can to address that question and set up the points of what I'm going to talk about in my introduction and I've given my reader a taste of something that's interesting that they want to going to continue reading what I've put together. So I've answered the question in the introduction and I've given my points about where I'm going to go to here. What you will notice is missing from this introduction is specific references to artworks because this question doesn't actually ask for that. I will later on show you how I do apply um, particular artworks as examples but it's not necessary in this kind of question because it's a generalized question about um, a describing of world events and how they shaped the futurist ideals. The artworks are just examples of how that is evident, but we'll get to that later. So introduction, I've answered the question. Then we need to get into the, the body of our actual response. So this is where I have an, uh, an opportunity to really start to clearly explain what I've said in my introduction. And so the paragraph is made up of four main components. The point, then I elaborate on that point. I provide examples that reiterate or reinforce what I've elaborated on. And then finally, the last sentence or few sentences actually link back to the question itself. Hopefully, as a result of reading this paragraph, the reader will see clearly how world events shaped futurist ideals. So, what is a point? The point is this is the introductory sentence where you put forth either the how, why or what, sometimes all three. It depends on the nature of the question. So what is my point that I'm going to give um, my reader here? My point is the world of the futurist was undergoing rapid change as a direct result of the advancements made in technology at the time you will notice that that was referenced possibly in slightly different language but it was there in my introductory paragraph. On to my elaboration now. So once you've actually put forward your point which is usually just one sentence you now need to step into the elaboration. So we've done the point Elaboration is where you explain in detail with reference to the question how or why the artist has created the work and in the way they have created it. Now in this case it's not about a specific artist, it's about the futurist in general. So we could reword the elaboration by saying this is where you explain in detail with reference to the question how the futurists responded to the world. So let's have a look at what I've written. The futurists, like everyone else from this time period, were exposed to the revolutionary technical discoveries of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. They saw this as man's triumph over nature. They were excited by what they saw. The invention of the car, the steam engine and new weaponry reflected their beliefs of a new and better world. The futurists loved the sensation and adrenaline brought on by experiencing fast-moving machines like the car. 
They were excited by the possibilities of the lifestyle that was emerging in their modern industrialised cities. The ability to eradicate useless humans who had no vision for the new future could be dealt with quickly through the effective machinery of war, as the reality of World War I became more likely. They wanted to wipe away all references to the past, both in its limited and backward thinking and in the buildings that housed these outdated values. The advent of a cleansing war would help to achieve the removal of these institutions and those who valued them. Okay, so what have I done in this elaboration? Here I'm explaining to my reader what kind of world events were taking place that has, I suppose, explained their head, their headspace, their thinking. So hopefully as a result of reading just this part of my paragraph, the reader will understand that this group of young men were really um, excited about what was being discovered and created as a result of these new technologies, which I referred to in my introduction. That I actually then give some of these new technologies names. You see car, steam engine, new weaponry. And then I go on and explain in my elaboration what it was that they were so excited about in terms of the car, the weaponry, and how it was going to actually support what they believed in, what their ideals were. So an elaboration needs to set up for your reader a context, a place of understanding why a situation is the way it is. Okay, so let's look at the examples now. So we've done the point, I've elaborated on the point, so now I need to use artworks to support what I've been claiming. They're my evidence for what I claim to be the case with these futurist ideals about world events. So I've chosen Umberto Boccioni to talk about um, my uh, as my examples here. You could use any futurist artist or a collection of them, but this is only one paragraph, so and I only have a short amount of time to write, uh, so I've decided just to use Umberto Boccioni. So remember that my examples, which are my artworks, they're my evidence of what I've claimed to be the case already in my elaboration. So here we go. Umberto Boccioni's unique forms of continuity in space and states of mind, the farewells, are two artworks that reflect the advancements in technology and world events of the futurist time. States of Mind depicts the excitement of a steam train in all its speed and dynamism. The artist focuses on the audience's attention on experiencing the noise, confusion and atmosphere of this modern phenomenon of travel. Compositionally, he achieves this through simultaneous views, abstract representations of colour and light, and interpreting the form of the train merging it into the surrounding landscape. In Unique Forms of Continuity in Space, Boccioni focuses on the impact of the human form in all its grace, powerfully moving through time and space, emphasising the plastic dionism used by the futurists inspired by the popular photographs of Maya Bridge of objects and people moving through space. Okay, whether you noticed it or not, this is what I've done in this particular part of the paragraph. I've given the name of an artist, and in this case I've given you two specific artworks. I actually refer to those artworks in terms of what I've already claimed in my introduction and then what I've elaborated on. And that's this notion of advancements in technology as an important part of the world events of the futurist time. Then I specifically start to explain through description, because remember the question's asking me to describe how these things are evident in these particular works. So I start off with start, set states of mind and I talk about it as a steam train. And you'll notice too that the language I start to use to describe both of these artworks are the language of the futurists and what they actually were trying to do with their art making. So I talk about what they're trying to do. They're focusing the audience's attention on the experience. Because remember, that's what their art was all about making their audience not just see the artwork but try and bring them into that 
excitement of experiencing a car flying through time and space and the dirt and the noise and the energy level. Um, the same thing with, in this case, with the train. You have to remember at this time in history, the, the ability to jump in a car or a train and move through um, the landscape at these speeds was revolutionary. It hadn't been done before. It was a really big deal. The same thing can be said too uh, about the kinds of um, explanations I've made about the composition. This idea of simultaneous views, abstract representations of colour and light, the interpreting of the form of the train merging into the surrounding landscape. If you go back to your analysis booklet and you have a look through the notes there, you will see that there's a slide presentation that we've captured and photocopied for you, you will see that these are specific descriptors of futurist stylistic qualities. And I'm applying these stylistic qualities directly to states of mind. The same thing applies again when we start to look at unique forms of continuity in space. Again, you start to see me describe and use specific terminology from the futurists in terms of stylistic qualities. I tell you what he's trying to do with the human form and then you see me use the word plastic dynamism. I also relate it back to this idea of world events. What was one of the world events that was influencing them? It was this particular artist called Mybridge who was a photographer and he was photographing horses and people and how they move through time and space. And the futurists were very much in, um, excited by what they were learning by looking at these sorts of photographs. So what I'm trying to make clear to you here is with your example you must give evidence of what you've claimed beforehand and use the language of that particular movement or of that particular artist or specific things that identify it. And in this case it's those identifying stylistic qualities of the futurists. Okay, so moving on from the example, the last thing we need to do is link this paragraph back to the question. We have to explain how this point, which you introduce a paragraph with, answers the question. Okay, so here I have two sentences. That's all it is. Sometimes it's as little as one, and sometimes it can be more than two. It depends on what you need to say in order to summarize it. So, I want you to notice that the link relates back to the main issue of the question, which is the futurist world. Every piece of art the futurist created aimed at capturing the excitement and promise as they personally experienced these things in their world. In many ways, the artworks of the futurists were the propaganda image for this new modern world. Okay, so what we have is the end of this presentation. Um, if I wanted to, I could go on and on and on and keep giving more and more details. But essentially, the point of this exercise was to show you how to arrive at constructing uh, a response using this I appeal scaffold. I for your introduction, where you answer the question. P, E, E, L for the paragraph. P standing for the point of the paragraph. E elaborating and giving details to support your point. Your second E is for your example. How is this example evidence of what you've elaborated on? And finally the link, how is the information in this paragraph evidence of answering the question? That's essentially how you scaffold using I appeal to answer a question like this one. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, email me, you have my email, and I will um, collate those questions, respond to you directly in class, or respond to you online. Good luck with answering the questions in your exams, and use this to help you. Thanks for listening.